Hi, my name is Josh. Today I'm going to be documenting my experience from receipt to setting up of the Raspberry Pi 4. So I am a computer enthusiast. I love computers and I have several computers, but I've always been interested in the Raspberry Pi. I've read about it. I've never used one before. I've never even seen one in person before. And so I thought, you know what? I should order one of these. And so I, I did. I ordered the Raspberry Pi 4 starter kit. Let's take a look at what comes in the starter kit. The kit I ordered, which was $139, this is about their most expensive configuration. It comes with a Pi card. It comes with a preloaded SD card. Uh, it also comes with a power supply. It comes with HDMI cable. And it comes with an enclosure for the Pi. It comes with a USB card reader and it comes with heat sinks. Apparently under heavy use it can get hot, although those heat sinks are optional. I bought it from canakits.com. Hopefully you can read that there, canakits.com. And I cannot vouch for this company. I'm not vouching for them as of yet. Let's see how it goes. And if at the end I'm happy, then we'll see. If you buy the most basic configuration for the model model 4, which is a brand new model with one gigabyte. It's $49. This is assuming you don't get the HDMI cable, you don't get the SD card, you just get the board, it's $49. So that saves you a lot of money. I didn't have all this stuff. I just wanted it to work as quickly as possible for myself, so I, I spent a little bit more money. You can buy the most basic Pi 3 for $25 from Canakits. For me, I thought it was better to buy something that's likely to be more powerful than what I need, uh, rather than buying something that's less powerful. I didn't want to spend a bunch of money, go to all this effort, put it together, have it shipped here, and then realize, oh, the one I bought doesn't have enough power. I need to go with the one with two gigs, three gigs, or four gigs. So I just went straight and I got the one with four gigs. Okay, so let's get to it. Let's uh, start taking stuff out of the box and look at what we got here. Here is the box. I have opened it at this point. Instructions. This is the HDMI to mini HD mini HDI cable. Here's the power supply. And we'll get to see all this stuff up close later. Here's the actual computer. It says Raspberry Pi 4 computer model B. Now I didn't specify model B, so maybe model A wasn't great and they just stopped producing my light because my light did not seem to be an option for me this is what it looks like it's really small it's uh smaller than a deck of cards and this is about what i was expecting hopefully it's gonna work like i expected i'm just gonna put this away i don't know if i need to be wearing any type of uh gloves or anything to reduce static electricity but i'm not Okay, this is the power supply. I thought this was, oh, this must be the enclosure. I made a mistake. You know, my guess is that won't be my last mistake that I make while I'm doing this. Okay, this is the plastic enclosure. Um, so it'll look nice on the desktop and I won't, won't get electrocuted just touching it accidentally. Although it only runs, I think it's uh, um, five volts or something. I think it runs five volts. This is a SD card to micro SD card adapter and still locked in the bag there. And this is the actual micro SD card. Is it a mini or micro? I believe it's a micro SD card still in the bag. We'll take these things out one at a time. Oh, this is, this also came in the um, box. This is micro SD to USB-C adapter. At least that's what I think it is. We'll take this out of, the, out of the bag and we'll find out about this. And then there's one more thing in the box. And then after that, the box is empty. So we can just put the box aside. This is, says it's specifically designed for helping to install noobs. So if I screw up the operating system, this is specifically designed to help me preload noobs into it. It says it's a USB micro SD card reader. And that's everything in the box. So let's look at starting to put this stuff together and make a computer that works. 
All right, only about five minutes has elapsed. I took everything out of the bags. I used some scissors and took everything out of the bags. And I have everything here in front of me that came in the kit. I haven't yet collected up my monitor and keyboard, but I have those and I'll get those in just a minute. Again, here is the, here's the actual board. It is super small. Here's the enclosure. I'm gonna see how easily it goes into the enclosure. The top just pops off. There aren't even any screws there. Seems pretty simple. What could go wrong? Oh, by the way, this is, can you see this? This is what the, um, all the connections look like on the end. There's an ethernet and it looks like four USB connections. And then on the side, there's some other connections. Uh, one's gonna be the micro HDMI and I don't know what the other ones are. We'll figure that out in a couple minutes. All right, so I'm gonna try and put it in the box now. Let's see how hard that is. No, okay, I got it wrong the first time. Nope, oh, that's still wrong. All right, I took a minor break there because I couldn't seem to figure out how to get it in the box. But, uh, huh, the bottom comes off too. So the top and the bottom come off and it makes it much easier to put it in the box because I wasn't having any luck getting it in the box, the enclosure. Okay, so there we have it in the enclosure. I'll give you a better picture of that. I'm gonna put the bottom back on. I can figure out which way that goes. Okay, keep in mind, I've never done this before. Still having a little trouble here. That seems much better. Okay, that seems much better. Um, all right, so let's put in the micro SD card. Okay, the micro SD card is in. Here's the HDMI cable. There are two, so this is interesting. This is, I know this is something new that's new for this particular model, and there are two HDMI ports on the side, so you can run two monitors at the same time, but we're only gonna run one. So we will put it in HDMI one, or no, it's HDMI zero. And then we need the power supply plugged in. And then the top goes on. So it's all kind of locked together. Now that I've put in all these um, accessories, all the cables, this should lock it together. There's no screws or anything, it just snaps together. Boom, the top's on. It's all snapped together. Now we need the monitor, the keyboard, and some power. So I'll be back in just a minute. So funny thing, the monitor that I was convinced had an HDMI, in fact, does not have an HDMI input, and so it won't work with the cable that I have. I can buy an adapter and I can get it to work, but you know, I'm trying to get it to work right now, so. This is the only other monitor I have in the house that has an HDI, HDMI input. And so it's of course my TV and we're gonna try and get this thing working on the TV. Uh, apparently these can be used as a media center. So maybe this is an opportunity for me to test it as a media center. I don't know, but we're gonna give it a try. I have the box here. It's all put together just like it was a minute ago. I haven't changed anything. I did plug the HDMI cable into the TV. I have not tried this yet. I'm gonna plug in the, uh, this old USB keyboard. I'm gonna plug in the keyboard. And there are 
four regular size HDMI plugs in here. So first plug in the keyboard, boom. Then I have an old mouse, USB mouse. Just to, to prove to you, see there, it's just a regular mouse, nothing exciting. And I'm gonna plug that in here. Of course, I probably need a mouse pad. It's not gonna work on the carpet. Sometimes I feel as if I don't plan things out well in advance. Okay, so the mouse is plugged in. The monitor is plugged in. The keyboard is plugged in. It just needs power now, in theory, in theory. Okay, it's plugged in. I don't see any, oh wait. I'm looking for some light or some indication of life in the box. I don't see anything right off hand. I'm gonna pop the top off. Oh, there's a little light in there. There is a light on. Okay, so it does have power. It's entirely possible that the TV is not on the right source. So let's turn on the TV. Boom! That's it. That's actually the Raspberry Pi. It's actually giving me an image on the TV and it looks really sharp. So it's going to install Raspbian. I think Raspbian is sort of the real operating system and Noobs is it's probably an acronym for something. I'm going to look that up, figure out what noobs means. I don't know. I'm going to click install. It says it's being installed. Uh, the Raspbian operating system based on Debian Linux is now being installed on your Raspberry Pi. And now it said successfully installed. Super, super easy to install the operating system. I haven't used it yet. Super easy to install the operating system. You probably can't see this on your screen, but this is a 46 inch TV. And I mean, the colors are not, uh, you know, as nice as I get when I, you know, stream TV on Netflix, but it's a very sharp picture. Okay, so there's some setup here. Um, what country am I in? I am in the United States. So I'm gonna log into my Wi-Fi. Okay, apparently connected. It says the operating system and the applications will be checked and updated if necessary. This may involve a large download. Next, just checking for updates. Let's restart it again, because that's what it's asking me to do. Again, we see the four, four raspberries up in the corner. So I'm just gonna see if we can get like a web browser going here. But let's try my favorite website. I like CNET. They have a lot of tech articles. I came up pretty quick. I'll tell you, it's faster than some of the Windows computers that I've used. All right, so it's not quite as smooth as my Mac, my modern Mac, but the graphics look nice. It's, it's definitely not as smooth as my Mac. I wonder if it would be better on, you know, a regular size screen rather than running it on a TV. Okay, I went to full, full width on the TV. Seems like maybe it's doing better now. It looks really nice to me. It's working, it looks nice. This took me 
at least an hour to set up. I paused the video a couple times, but honestly, it's just because I've never done it before. This was super simple to set up. It's up, it's running, and all I really needed to do was snap some stuff together. I had a little trouble getting the box together, you know, me having fat fingers. This was super easy to put together. I basically plugged everything together. I told it to load the operating system and it's done. I'm gonna play with it some more and then I'm gonna give an update. Hey, it's Josh. All right, so I've had several days to review the Raspberry Pi 4B and I can say I really like it. I'm, I'm really excited to have done this and uh, it was kind of a little experiment and I feel like it's really worked out well. It's a fun little project. It was super easy. It's a Raspberry Pi 4B with four gigabytes of RAM. I purchased it from Canakit.com and they get my seal of approval. I think they did a great job. They, the price was reasonable. They sent everything in a timely manner. It was well organized. And I haven't called them like for any support or anything like that. I would hope they would be able to provide that, but uh, you know, they, they sent what they were supposed to send. And so I was, I was happy with that. I bought the four gig version of the Pi 4B. I doubt I needed four gigs. It's just that it costs only a little bit extra to go from two gigs to four gigs. What well, you can get it with one gig, two gig, I think you can get three gigs and then four gigs. And I just thought better to get too much than too little. Probably since this is such a new product of Pi 4, probably as time goes on, there'll be more information uh, available online to give you a better indication of how much RAM you actually need. Probably don't need four gigs, but for 20 bucks, I just got the extra four gigs over two gigs. The setup of the device was super simple. Um, I put in the SD card, uh, which had noobs for new out of the box operating system. And noobs makes it really easy. You turn it on just like you turn on any new computer that you bought from the store, and it walks you through the setup of the operating system. It, it's as easy as any commercial, you know, Windows or Apple computer I've ever purchased before. And I'm, I was surprised at how easy it was. I was expecting that I'd need to do more sort of command line technical stuff, but just setting up the basic operating system was super simple. I do have one gripe and that is that this board overheats and I can tell when I pick it up that it's physically warm in my hand um, and then eventually not under necessarily heavy CPU usage but just oh, after consistent usage after time elapses um, it gets warmer until I start to get an indication on the screen there's a little sort of thermometer looking thing First it comes on the screen, then it starts to blink, then it starts to blink more rapidly, indicating that it's overheating. And I, I think it'll throttle the CPU when it overheats, but it also just makes me nervous. I don't want it to, I don't know if it could potentially catch fire. I don't like it when things overheat, so I don't like that it overheats. Online, a lot of people have said, just get a fan for it. So I, I kind of wish Canakit had told me that maybe I need a fan for it, but I'm trying to give them the benefit of the doubt. This is a new product they probably just didn't know. I think the, the product just very recently came out. I wasn't you know, aware that I was buying something so new, but it is the fastest Raspberry Pi. And I thought, well, if I'm gonna buy one, I might as well buy the newest one. And so now I'm gonna spend another 20 bucks. I'm gonna go out and get a case. I don't mind doing this. I'm gonna get a case that has a fan in it and that'll cool it down. And then it'll work fine according to what I've read online. So let's hope that's actually true. Um, other than the case, I, also the case didn't really fit very well. You, if you watched the whole video, you saw it was like using a Rubik's cube. I tried really hard to get the case to fit well and I, it took me a while. Finally, I got it in there, but it, it wasn't easy. So I just didn't like the plastic case that I got. If you, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Also, for those of you who are hams, I am gonna use this to control my ham radios and that's the software you see running behind me. Uh, it's gonna be JS8 Call. 
and I'll do a separate video and you'll find that in a link below. It'll, it'll take me a week or two. I've got it running, but I want to play with it some and um, I'll try and get some good video and just give you my impression. So far it seems to be working better than my Windows machine because it's completely dedicated. It's not doing anything else. It's just running this one piece of software. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. And for those of you who are going to watch the second video, I'll see you then. Take care. This is Josh.